It's a competitive compact SUV world out there, with the luxury section of the segment full of entries, many of which came out within the past few years. When the Audi Q3 arrived in the US in 2015, it was already a bit outdated. From its conservative look to its uninspired interior, it didn't feel new because it wasn't. The arrival of the 2024 Audi Q3, however, changed everything. It's bigger, better looking both inside and out, and loaded with tech. This punky little sibling in the Volvo lineup is the 2023 XC40, which blends Volvo's focus on safety and upscale ambiance with a more youthful character. It is arguably the most visually attractive subcompact luxury SUV out there. It's boxy, proportioned well, and features the trademark Swedish design we love. Volvo prodded this year's XC40 with a number of updates too. And with both offering luxury, performance, and practicality, in this video we will take a closer look at their designs both inside and out, pricing and how they drive. So, without any further ado, let's get into it. Audi's conservative and refined exterior design has undergone something of a renaissance over the past few years, with the Q8 and e-tron informing the design of the company's other crossovers. The Q3 ditches the last generation's anonymous look in favor of a more aggressive fascia. Highlights include more aggressive headlights and a prominent upright grille. The squat-looking rear end is tight and clean, with taillight signatures reminiscent of Audi's larger CUVs. The Q3 is clean in profile, with a fast D-pillar and handsome character lines over the front and rear wheel arches. And with the higher trim levels, the S-Line package makes an enormous difference visually, transforming the Q3 from an urban crossover into a more aggressive vehicle, befitting of its Audi badge. The Volvo XC40 sleek and modern exterior design blends bold styling elements with a refined aerodynamic profile, which stands in contrast to the Q3's aggressive look. The front features a bold grille with chrome accents, while the sharp LED headlamps with Thor's hammer's motif give the XC40 a sporty and distinctive look. The side profile is characterized by smooth curves and a flowing roofline that enhances its slippery silhouette and gives the vehicle a relaxed yet muscular appearance. At the rear, you will find massive vertical LED taillights, an aggressive rear spoiler, and a smooth bumper that gives it a dynamic look. The overall design of both is aimed at giving the cars a sophisticated appearance that appeals to a wide range of customers, but if I had to choose, the Audi Q3 is my favorite here. Jumping inside, the Q3's cabin is filled with sharp angles and a finely consolidated overall look that welcomes it into the new decade with open arms, and stands in contrast to the more elegant interior of the XC40. The clean design of the interior goes a long way in creating a sense of space inside the cabin, which is finished off with an attention to detail typified by Audi. The big distinction between the Q3 and Audi's larger crossovers is the bank of buttons and knobs for the climate system rather than a separate, dedicated touchscreen. It's simple and functional. There are only two interior elements we really dislike. Both the key fob and the traditional gear lever look and feel like something you'd find on a $20,000 Volkswagen rather than a $44,000 Audi. The Q3 has been packed with technology, including a standard 10.25-inch digital instrument display and an 8.8-inch touchscreen presented high with an easy reach. Both can be upgraded to Audi's virtual cockpit system that increases the instrument panel to 12.3 inches and the center touchscreen to 10.1. The upgraded system's resolution is exquisite, it reacts quickly to inputs and even goes so far as providing haptic feedback when you press the screen. Both Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are included. As for Volvo, the XC40 boasts a handsome upscale design with materials to match, exuding a Swedish premium vibe that few of its direct competitors can match. The padded and stitched leather on the dash, doors and center console are a nice touch, as is the alloy trim on the air vents that seem to stick out from within the dash. Admittedly, fancier touches like the Ultimate's aluminum trim are absent on lower trim levels, but the overall interior ambiance remains more premium and stylish than those of some of its competitors. The climate control system is managed through the touchscreen, unlike the Q3's physical controls. When it comes to infotainment, there are two digital displays, a 12.3-inch gouge cluster screen and a 9-inch touchscreen in the center of the dash that controls nearly everything. We would prefer a few more physical buttons and knobs, but the touchscreen is responsive enough and its Android interface will be familiar to anyone who has used a smartphone. Some of the on-screen buttons are too small, however, as if Volvo forgot to scale them up from phone size. The digital gouge cluster can also be a bit cryptic, but is overall superior to the standard one you find on the Q3. When it comes to interior space, the base seats in the Q3 are quite boring to look at, but the optional Black Sport interior package dresses up the cabin and is easily worth the price. It includes more bolstered front seats, a three-spoke steering wheel, and brushed aluminum inlays. 
Audi says the front seats offer 40 inches of legroom, while the rear seats offer 36.1. This is fine for the segment, but even shorter occupants will find their knees touching the front seats. The rear bench can slide backwards and forwards and recline, but the legroom is tight even at the furthest position. As for cargo space, with the rear seats up, you will have 23.7 cubic feet. When more space is required, fold in the 40-20-40 split second row seats increase overall cargo space to 48 cubic feet. Although the XC40 is slightly smaller on the outside than the Q3, they are almost identical inside apart from some extra headroom in the Q3. The XC40 has adequate space inside for four occupants to ride around, and the seats both front and back are supremely comfortable, especially compared to Audi's. The back seat is a little small for larger adults, but that comes with the territory for most of the segment. As for cargo, it offers 16 cubic feet of space behind its back seat, which is 8 cubes less than the Audi. With the rear seat backs folded, space increases to a whopping 57.5 cubic feet, which is just shy of 10 cubes bigger than the Q3. As far as pricing goes, the Q3 starts at $37,000. Audi then breaks down the trim hierarchy into premium and premium plus versions with the 40 TFSI and 45 TFSI engines available with both. The premium plus at $42,200 is mandatory if you want the $2,500 technology package that includes the virtual cockpit, larger touchscreen, and wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Pricing for the XC40 starts at higher $41,500 for an all-wheel drive core model. We think the plus trim at $46,400 best exemplifies the XC40 with a panoramic moonroof and high-performance audio system. The top ultimate trim goes for a whopping $50,000. As you can tell, the Q3 is far cheaper than the XC40 across the board, but whether the XC40's higher price tag is justified over the more reasonable Q3 is up to you. When it comes to on-road performance, the Q3 is powered by a 2-liter turbocharged Ford that makes 228 horsepower and 258 pound-feet of torque. That sounds like enough to get about until you realize that the Q3 tips the scale at a staggering 3,900 pounds. It takes 7 seconds to get to 60, almost a second longer than the XC40 takes to do the same. Despite being slower on the watch, the Q3 feels quick enough for everyday driving. There is ample low-end torque making this hefty high rider feel spry off the line, but it's a boring car to accelerate in. The Q3 just kind of exists. It negotiates turns easily enough, but it's never fun or eager in the way that vehicles this size should be. That, more than its straight-line disadvantage, is probably down to the ample weight. Throw the Q3 into a bend and it rolls. The behavior is predictable, but there is a lot of body motion. Someone at Audi headquarters hit the mute button on feedback too, as the Q3 simply fails to vocalize what's happening between the rubble and the road. One shouldn't expect telepathic behavior, but this Audi could certainly stand to be more engaging and entertaining during the daily grind. The XC40, on the other hand, ditches the entry-level engine and now comes standard with 248 horsepower and 258 pound-feet of torque with all-wheel drive. The torque arrives at just 1800 RPM and remains for another 3000 revolutions. The 8-speed automatic provides the power cleanly, without any hiccups or hesitation. It's a shame then that the pretty crystal shifter maintains that odd Volvo double tap when shifting from reverse to drive. It never fails to make a three-point turn feel awkward. The steering wheel is expectedly light, yet accurate. Point the XC40 towards a tighter corner at speed and the body leans in, reminding you this isn't a Polestar model. There are the requisite selectable drive modes on board, but the XC40 just doesn't suit sport. Instead, leave it in regular mode and enjoy a comfortable drive. The Volvo feels in its elements on gentle curves and highway speeds, where there is less wind noise than you'd expect given its boxy shape. The smart cruise control, also optional, works as intended, keeping a consistent speed and distance from the car ahead. So, why would you get the XC40 instead of the Q3? That's a really good question. The Audi's primary cons are no hybrid powertrain and an overall less comfortable ride, especially on the sport package. The XC40, on the other hand, offers best-in-class comfort, a more relaxing driving experience, luxurious interior, and sleek style. But if all you care about is the best bang for the buck, then you can't really go wrong with getting the Q3.